our Saudi Arabian Grand Prix F1 driver ratings. This video is sponsored by the wonderful people over at Squarespace, the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Okay, let's get into driver ratings then, shall we, and begin with Kevin Magnussen, the absolute chef. He qualified 13th and finished 12th. I am going to lock in for K-Mag, the defensive train conductor, a seven out of 10. I can't give him any higher than a seven because the bloke was absolutely on it with penalties. And I feel as though that you have to take that into account. It, it, he obviously did a great job for Nika Hulkenberg, got Hass a point, but the only reason he did was because he shoved Albon in the wall got him some front wing damage and then overtook Sonoda off the track and then decided to slow down the rest of the cars behind him, which was, you know, Minister of Defence stuff. But you, you can't ignore the fact that he was breaking rules in order to make this happen. I have gone for Kevin Magnussen a 5 out of 10. This one is a controversial one to essentially kick things off because essentially he's done a fantastic team job but like you say it's based on his erratic driving his move on Albon was ridiculous his move on Sonoda was illegal and you can argue that he might have even got points himself if he didn't drive um so badly he's a really difficult driver to rate because he did what he did for the team but only because he was a bit useless well 24 percent of people gave him an eight out of ten but then so that's the fan vote Eight out of ten for K Mag. Yeah, eight percent five, nine percent six. So people were very generous to K Mag. Uh, Twelve percent. You you thought you were onto something there. You loaded that up expecting a bigger, a bigger, a bigger number yeah, for a four out of ten. Yeah, basically the fans are wrong. Why do we even do this? Um, cause, <laughs> oh, Tommy, cause don't 12, say that. Because <laughs> twelve percent of people have given him ten out of ten. Wow, Tommy's starting off this driver ratings with an absolute <laughs> sucker punch to not just K-Mag, but everybody that watches and listens as well. Unbelievable scenes. <laughs> Let's go to his teammate now then, Nico Hulkenberg. He qualified 15th and finished 10th. Gone for an 8 out of 10 for Nico Hulkenberg because unlike his teammate, he actually drove a good race. He was very unfortunate, I think, not to make it through, maybe even to Q3. Uh, had that that problem and made it made it work yes thanks to kevin magnuson but oh, it's such a difficult one to, to to grade magnuson the more i say it, i'm more like no maybe he should get more but i'm <laughs> no, like no no, no he shouldn't <laughs> no, no you, i think you, you said that with five. your chest tommy yeah you can't no. get it back now. uh for nico holkenberg i am actually going to give him a nine out of ten uh, i'm going to try this year when possible, to give slower car drivers an actual good grade. At the end of the day, Nico Hulkenberg has entered the top five team category, obviously with Stroll's mistake, but still, he has scored a point, which we have already said many times uh, was very, very difficult uh, to do. And also, you know, he was really unlucky in qualifying, uh, where he had a problem uh, with, a fuel, with the fuel system, uh, and then just drove a really solid race. And, and, you know, I look at that and I go, how much more could he have done? and the fans have given him an eight. Let's quickly chat about our sponsor for this video, Squarespace, a place where you can build a website with absolutely no coding knowledge required. What's better too is that you can create one for free and only start paying once you decide to go ahead and publish your website. With Fluid Engine, a next generation website design system from Squarespace, it's never been easier for anyone to unlock unbreakable creativity. What's better yet is that you can continue to improve your website as well with the use of analytics to know what's working and what isn't. So what are you waiting for? Head to squarespace.com forward slash P1 to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using the code P1. Zhou Guan Yu now, qualified 20th, finished 18th. I've gone for a four out of 10 uh, for Zhou Guan Yu. Not the best of weekends by, by any stretch. Of course, he crashed uh, in final practice, which then meant uh, he couldn't set a time in qualifying. He missed the flag by only a few seconds uh, and then just had a, a very, very just uneventful race. I've gone for a three out of 10 for Zhou Guan Yu. When on these kind of circuits, it's the, 
the risk you run for having a big crash in FP3. So I have to grade it harshly that, that essentially he's binned it in the wall, given his mechanics a huge, huge job, and it's basically cost his whole weekend from, from there on, really. The fans gave Zhu Guan Yu a 5 out of 10. Intriguing. We now go to his teammate, Valtteri Bottas. Qualified 16th, finished 17th. I have gone for a 4 out of 10 for Valtteri Bottas. A mediocre race, not much to shout about. You think with Bottas that maybe he could pull something out of the bag. We saw, like I say, Joe, Joe getting points in Bahrain. It doesn't seem like the kick Sauber is miles off the others. I still don't think it's a great car, but I'm sure Bottas, with his experience, could have delivered something a bit better than, than 17th, so I've given him a 4. I am going to go for a 5 out of 10 for Valtteri Bottas, just purely because I think this, this car is absolutely horrendous and I can't give him a, a, the same grade as, as Zhou Guan Yu considering the mistakes that were in his weekend. So yeah, I'm going to go for a 5 for, for Bottas and the fans gave Bottas a 4. Yuki Tsunoda now. Qualified 9th, finished 14th. I'm going to give Yuki Tsunoda a 6 out of 10. Obviously had a great qualifying, managed to get to Q3, which is uh, no mean feat. Uh, was five places ahead of Danny Rick, completely smoked him in that. What could have been, I think, once again uh, for Yuki, but still showed signs of pace, signs of promise. That's why I can't give him straight down the middle. So that's why it's a little bit higher than that. It pains me to say that I've gone for a 5 out of 10 for Yuki Sonoda. I think it could have been another points finish, particularly with someone like you know, Nico Hulkenberg and Haas scoring a point. So there were points up for grabs. And it was disappointing that he kind of got outsmarted in a lot of the, the racing. Uh, for example, you know, he was he was battling with K-Mag for so long and couldn't get past him. And then his, his move ended up costing him a place to Ocon and then he got stuck in the DRS train. And I do think that that points were up for grabs if maybe he'd managed to get past K-Mag and hold that position. Uh, Yuki Tsunoda, the fans, gave him a 6 out of 10. Daniel Ricciardo now qualified 14th, finished 16th. I've gone for 2 out of 10 for Daniel Ricciardo. It's painful, but I think he had an absolutely awful race. I thought these days that we saw at McLaren were over, but this, like I said in the race review podcast, looked exactly like the days of of McLaren. You know, to be almost half a second off Yuki Tsunoda in qualifying is not great. Spun on his own, very bizarre. Just, yeah, looked just completely, <laughs> really bad, uh, really bad weekend for him. And I notice a lot of people trying to justify his race by saying he had a, a really slow pit stop like a 40 second pit stop but he had that pit stop during a safety car period which meant that he was on the back of the pack for the safety car restart so he didn't lose 40 seconds he obviously lost like a place or something i've gone for a three out of ten for daniel ricardo i guess that 40 second pit stop you know, everyone's focusing on that part but as you say he was running towards the back anyway not great pace obviously spun at turn one which I love how the commentators tried to be like, was there contact? Did, did, did someone hit <laughs> him? No, no, he had contact with the curb too hard and spun. Yeah, it, it was a a concerning weekend uh, for Daniel Ricciardo and and everyone that loves him. A, a really disappointing weekend for Danny Rick uh, and one that he cannot do too many more of these. Otherwise, we are going to be questioning what happens to, to him and his seat. Uh, the fans gave him a 3 out of 10 as well. Logan Sargent now, qualified 19th, finished 15th. I am going to give Logan Sargent a 4 out of 10. Just a, a, a disappointing uh, race for, for Logan. I genuinely thought that maybe, just maybe... Well, I didn't. I, 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 kind of <laughs> I was going to say, he made him But in flop. the race, he was he yeah. was there. He was in the mix. He had K-Mag you know, holding up the whole train. You know, maybe he can get involved and get stuck in. But Albon destroyed him again with damage. That's just not good enough. Starting 19th, seven places behind your teammate is, is one thing, but then not being able to translate it really into the race as well. Logan, 
He's starting this season exactly how he finished last season. Yeah, I've gone for a four out of 10 for Logan as well. I completely echo everything you say. It doesn't seem like he's improved at all going into this season, at least from the start of it, which is a big shame to see because you thought with the backing of James Fowles and a bit of a reset over the winter that he'd be able to just sort of get his head back in the game and and, and be fine. But yeah, he shouldn't be getting so compre comprehensively beaten by Alex Albon. The fans gave Logan Sargent a four out of 10. Alex Albon now, qualified 12th, finished 11th. Gone for a seven out of 10 for Alex Albon. 11th is actually a pretty decent <laughs> finishing position when, again, there's not, the, the top teams have kind of locked out a lot of those positions. It's a difficult one to, to grade because yeah, uh, Logan's not having a great start to the season um, and he was kind of caught in that pack. Nothing huge to shout out about, but it's, it's, a, it's a solid result uh, again and exactly what, what someone like Logan should be doing as well, but he's not. A little bit of sideways slander to Logan again as we were talking about Alex, fair enough. Uh, I've also gone for a 7 out of 10 for Alex Albon. I think that it was a decent enough drive. It was a shame that he got stuck in that pack and I think he was I think he definitely actually said that he was wishing that he had a bit more top uh, top straight line speed to, to get past uh, the, the Haas and that, obviously that train um, but st to still finish 11th is a decent drive and to do that with damage as well after being squeezed into the wall um, is is great um, yeah unlucky for Alex um, but still a, a decent enough drive the fans gave him a 7 out of 10 as well Esteban Ocon qualified 17th finished 13th I've gone for a 6 out of 10 for, for Ocon. Uh, I think that it was uh, a better outing for Ocon to actually be in that pack where he would have been had Magnussen not been slowing down. Who knows? But he was obviously stuck right in there trying to get past the Haas for quite some time. Uh, but it wasn't an absolute disaster showing from Alpine this time. They're nowhere near the top five teams. That's clear to see. But at least they're not languishing at the back in 17th and 18th. Ocon was getting involved, stuck in there, gained some positions in, in the race. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, that's why I've gone for a six. I've gone for a seven out of 10 for Esteban Ocon. 13th in, in my opinion, the worst car in the field is actually quite good. Fair enough, yeah. Uh, the fans gave Ocon a five. Pierre Gasly. He qualified 18th and then did not finish. Retired with a gearbox problem on lap one. I've gone for a five out of 10 for Pierre Gasly. He's a very difficult driver to rate, of course, because... Now, talk me through his race, Tommy. Come on. Okay, well, um, lap one. Wow, incredible. The way he radioed his team to say that his car had broken down already was superb. Beautifully um, communicated. Great communication, yeah. yeah. But Alpine, awful, useless, <laughs> many other bad words. What more can go wrong for Alpine? We will have to wait we'll and find see. Find out. Yes, uh, I've gone for a five out of ten as well for Gasly. As you say, four thousandths of a second separating Ocon and Gasly in qualifying uh, just shows just how closely matched uh, those two are. But they are both in dustbins at the moment. And uh, fingers crossed for their sake and for Alpine's sake, they can figure out why uh, why that is. Very hard to rate. So straight down the middle uh, for Gasly with a five. And the fans also. Gave him a 5 out of 10. Lance Stroll now qualified 10th and then did not finish because he crashed on lap 5. I am going to lock in a 2 out of 10 for Lance Stroll. Um, it's a mistake that's easily done, but it's a mistake all the same. Binned it into the wall. You know, he made Q3, which was a tiny, like, woo for, for Lance. But obviously he was six places behind his teammate. Come on, son. You've got to be doing better than that, my friend. Otherwise, your seat's going to be under... Th oh, wait. Two out of ten. Yes, for Lance Stroll, I've gone for a one out of ten. I really don't want to slander him, but he makes it extremely difficult with this because last race, we were singing his praises. This is exactly what he needs to do. And then he is absolutely nowhere near Alonso in qualifying, which is bad even, even for him to be that far off. I mean, Behrman wasn't that far off. Charles Leclerc. It might be a zero, but maybe he just gets a one for his amusing team radio. A sympathy point for that team radio, which was absolutely world class. Uh, the fans also gave Lance Stroll a two out of ten. So they're on my side. They're being a bit more lenient Generous. than Tom 
Bellingham. Fernando Alonso now qualified fourth, finished fifth. I have gone for a nine out of 10 for Fernando Alonso. Shock. Yeah, shock. Who would have thought just got everything he possibly could out of that car? Don't think it's one of the, <laughs> the top cars. Well, it is one of the top cars, but not the top of the top. So to deliver fourth in qualifying, almost getting on the front row and then finishing uh, an impressive fifth, I think is a very good job from, from Fernando and just more like what, what he did last year, just getting everything he possibly can out of a, a car. Yeah, I banter about you loving Fernando, but it was a 9 out of 10 performance because that's what I've also gone for. Uh, I think that the Aston Martin probably isn't as quick as that. And for, for Alonso to have kept Russell at bay for pretty much the entire race was uh, was a great um, uh, a great effort as well. The fans gave Fernando an 8 out of 10. Oscar Piastri now qualified 5th, finished 4th. I have gone for a 9 out of 10 for Oscar Piastri. I think that it was an excellent race from him. He is so tenacious and aggressive on the first lap as well. I love seeing Oscar Piastri on the first lap. He's like, tyre wear? No. Getting the tyres into a window? No. I'm just going to send it. And he's just so aggressive. Uh, and I love to see that from Oscar. And, and just generally, he, he had a great race. Of course, he got stuck behind Hamilton. But my God, that McLaren is like, it has a parachute out the back of its car down the straight line. Uh, in a straight line, sorry. I've also gone for a 9 out of 10 for Oscar Piastri. I think it's a, a big statement so early in the season to out-qualify uh, Lando Norris and his race pace has improved quite a lot as well. Oscar did a, a fantastic job uh, and yeah, he's had a, a very, very good start to the season indeed. Well done. The, f the fans gave Oscar an 8 out of 10. Ooh. Yeah, savage. Lando Norris now qualified 6th, finished 8th. I've gone for a 7 out of 10 for Lando Norris. He was obviously very close to Oscar in qualifying. Still don't really understand how on earth he managed to escape a jump start penalty. Lucky there because it could have been worse. And of course, you know, he he did a completely different strategy that didn't work out. I expected more from, from Lando. Uh, I've also gone for a 7 out of 10 for Lando. I think that the FIA did clear it up and essentially said that because of the there was no no it's basically what we thought that there was no notification from the transponder that there was movement or enough movement in the grid box which i mean you can just use your literal eyes to see that but no lando it's difficult to judge his race or his pace because of the fact he was put on a very strange strategy and it was one of those strategies that was a hopeful one rather than anything else and yeah the gamble didn't pay off so seven out of ten from me and the fans also gave Lando a 7 out of 10. Oli Berman qualified 11th, finished 7th. It is a 10 out of 10. And I, I, I love social media. I also despise it in equal measure. But some people saying, oh, stop hyping Oli Behrman up. Liam Lawson did this or blah, blah, blah did this. And it's like, OK, fine. They are separate examples that were commended and Ollie Behrman should be commended for a one hour practice and to go and do what he then did around this track which I've said so many times is a very difficult track and very easy to make a mistake. Lance Stroll showed that who is a veteran of the sport these days. He's been around long enough and he's broken his front left steering arm. Ollie Behrman did not do that and especially at the end of the race he showed unbelievable tenacity to just just lock down and not be phased by what was behind. It's a great performance, if not fantastic performance from Molly Behrman. And I will not hear anything other than a 10 out of 10 for his performance. Well, then. No, no, I've gone for a 10 out of 10. Don't worry. Good. Um, well, it was P1 with Matt. <laughs> you can't just say it's a Ferrari. He had so much up against him. He's never had that race simulation. He was talking about how difficult it was to follow other cars and that was something he was experiencing for the first time in a race by a few laps of course he's got a big car advantage but he's never driven it before in a race and he had to make moves you know on Sonoda and and Hulkenberg and, and these drivers that he's not raced in Formula One before he's not done any running so yeah it, it was thrown up against him and he delivered it was a great great performance 
really, really good. The fans gave Ollie Behrman a 10 out of 10 as well. Charles Leclerc, he qualified second, finished third. I've gone for a 9 out of 10. Yeah, good podium. Was never going to beat the Red Bulls, but he did what, what he needed to do. And <laughs> what, what more can you, you say, really? He is in a, a good car. It looks like Ferrari are the second quickest car, and he's delivered where where it should be. A bit of a, a quiet race, really, but um, a good good performance. Yeah, I've given, gone for a 9 out of 10 as well for Charles Leclerc. I think he even said it was a boring race because uh, he couldn't really do much. Yeah, a P3 is, is, is the absolute pretty much maximum he could have uh, could have done there they're still lacking some pace in in the race for sure oh dear when is it gonna change <laughs> who knows but yes a nine out of ten and the fans also gave Charles Leclerc a nine as well we now go to George Russell he qualified seventh and finished sixth I have gone for a Oh, oh, seven, no, eight, no, God, it's right in the middle, seven, seven out of ten for George Russell, I don't think it was anything special this weekend, but he beat his teammate, qualified ahead of him, um, scored some decent points, I, I don't think we really saw much of George Russell at all, really, in this race, and for a team that is so high up the grid, you don't tend to see that all too much, but uh, yeah, George had a a reasonably quiet race, but a, a, a decent showing. Yeah, I've also gone for a 7 out of 10. Did a good job, uh, if not spectacular, but then the Mercedes doesn't seem particularly great at the moment. If um, not spectacular? Are you saying that he might well have done a spectacular performance? Are you saying not spectacular? It was not said, spectacular. Yeah, you, said, yeah. you said if not spectacular. I was like, wait, <laughs> you should be giving the if, 10 then, bro. No, it, it was not spectacular. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the fans gave George Russell a 7 out of 10. Lewis Hamilton now qualified 8th and finished 9th. Gone for a 6 out of 10 for Lewis Hamilton. I argue it might even be a low 6. Um, he didn't have a good weekend at all. Didn't look particularly quick. Yeah, George beat him in all the sessions as well, you know, qualifying as well. And yeah, he was, he was on that bad suicidal strategy that we mentioned that Lando was on. But I, I think even if it was a normal run, uh, he wouldn't have beaten George anyway based on uh, the weekend he had. It was a bit a bit of a messy weekend from him. Certainly was. Uh, I've gone for a 6 out of 10 as well for Lewis Hamilton. Um, yeah, it was it was not the right strategy. Obviously, in hindsight, it was right with Lando and, and fighting there. And you could see just how much they were losing in that first sector. Obviously, some of that's down to set up and where the McLaren was was good, but my goodness me, they were losing like almost a second at times uh, to, to to Norris and and then Hamilton, you know, typically coming over the radio and saying, "Wow, that that McLaren is impressive in the high speeds and all that sort of stuff." And the fans have gone for a six out of ten as well. Sergio Perez qualified third, finished second. I've gone for a nine out of ten for Sergio Perez this week. I think that it was a, a very solid performance from Perez, just like he did last year at this stage as well and I'm hoping that it continues for Perez's sake he's not quite on Max's level but we all kind of know that really uh, and I think Perez himself knows that and I I wonder if that actually will help him if he begins to kind of understand that he doesn't need to push as hard to try and beat Max Verstappen because Max is in an absolute league of his own at the moment I've also gone for a 9 out of 10 he's, he's had a, a great start to the season everything that he needs to do and yeah can't say much much more than that it's a it's a, a good drive he's not going to be worried in the slightest about uh, people taking his seat based on the, the ones that are rumored to be taking it and how they're driving at the moment so yeah he's doing uh doing a, a good job absolutely and, and a lot fans... closer to max actually sorry as well um yeah closer than than Bahrain yeah, for sure it's not like that so. 20 second gap but you know minus the penalty it was only what Eight or something, I think. Eight or nine, yeah. A, a decent performance from him. The fans gave him a nine out of ten. And finally, Max Verstappen. All right, first. Finish first. It's another ten out of ten. Dominant qualifying. Some of the screenshots from his qualifying lap are insane. I think it's probably gone under a bit under the radar because you kind of expect him to get pole now, whereas that one in 2021... Because it was such a close fight, it looked more spectacular. But when you watch his on board, um, you wouldn't know that he'd been up 
till 4 a.m. playing iRacing the previous day. So just a comfortable victory, never looked in doubt, didn't get the fastest lap, clearly needs to do should a bit be a more seven, iRacing. Then, really. Yeah, should have gone to bed um, at 2 a.m. instead. When you actually just think about it, that he's won 19 of the last 20 races, uh, I think you said it on the on the Twitch stream that we are arguably witnessing the greatest prime of a driver that we've ever seen and it's hard to disagree because he's just unstoppable this is the thing right you know and people would argue yeah but Verstappen's up against Perez and Perez isn't that great or whatever but if you actually look at the delta times between you know this particular season and the last few with Max Verstappen obviously winning and the advantage that Red Bull have over one lap and, and in the race, compare that to the Mercedes domination era, compare that to the Ferrari domination era, which was a long time ago, uh, but they had bigger margins, and yet these records are being broken by Max Verstappen, who it's not easy in qualifying. As you say, you see the screenshots. He is pushing to the absolute ragged edge with, within a couple of centimetres of the wall, and it's just absolutely mind-boggling that he is able to produce such metronomic consistency every single week. And I genuinely, look, people joke about oh, eye racing. He's on at, till 4 a.m., you know, never stops thinking about it. But that, I genuinely think there is a part to play with the fact that he lives and breathes motorsport. It, he never switches off from it. And yes, as you may well think, I'm going to say a 10 out of 10 is coming from me as well for Max Verstappen. The fans also gave Max Verstappen a 10 out of 10. No surprise there. Finally, we have to decide who is our P1. And you know what? This week, I'm giving it to Max Verstappen because we've just absolutely commended him to high heavens and I can't then go and give it to Oli Behrman as much as it was an incredible performance for him as well. Uh, Max Verstappen is getting my uh, P1 this week. I will give it to Behrman. Just to be yeah, different. I thought you would, just to be different. But, <laughs> course, uh, you know, Behrman does deserve it as well. Cool, that pretty much wraps it up for this week's edition of Driver Ratings. Thank you, everybody. Lots of love. Um, be sure to join our Patreon if you want to have uh, lots more exciting access to other podcasts that we do during the season and uh, loads of other benefits, Discord and... You can get a one-on-one -on -one with... No, you don't get a one-on-one -on -one with Tommy. Sorry, that's that's only for OnlyFans. So, um, right. Thank you, everybody. Lots of love. Take care. Bye. Bye.